Hello, YouTube. It's Toss Krigger. Welcome to another video. So last week, I looked at FreeBSD on the system that I had built LFS on. I even did a farewell to LFS. And after trying out FreeBSD for a little bit and doing that video, I restored LFS. <laughs> <laughs> BSD is interesting. Great community out there. A lot of good feedback from that video. Uh, I did look at a few different versions of BSD. As I mentioned, maybe I needed to try something that was a little bit um, less advanced just to get my feet wet. I mean, just because I understand Gen 2 and source space with that doesn't mean that I'm going to understand all the nuances that are incorporated with BSD. It has a great place. There are many companies that use it. What I kind of figured out after trying TrueOS, looking at um, Ghost BSD, I do believe Ghost BSD in the end, is what I should have tried the first time because it kind of gave me a full environment to work with. But all in all, it was a good experience just to take a look at it and see what it's capable of doing and what it can do. But I think I'll stick with my Gen 2 and Linux based distros for right now. <laughs> and speaking of Gen 2, I am currently on my main Gen 2 system. I kind of set the LFS off to the side for a little bit so I could do some general maintenance on this machine, make sure things were working proper, and that sort of thing. And that brings me up to today's discussion that I want to do a video about. I did an eMERGE update, synchronizing, and uh, updated the world. And when I updated the world, I only had about 24 packages, and that was pretty good. Now, typically when I update, I'll do that. I'll do a depth clean, and then I still do a rev depth, a rev rev depth rebuild. Yeah, <laughs> mine goes fuzzy. Now the oh, the weirdest thing happened to me when I did this this evening. When I ran it, I ran into this problem here. So I tried it a couple times, and I went ahead and I wanted to make sure that I deleted everything out of that to rerun it and when it ran it did really well until it got to about 87 percent and then it stated that i had a broken user lib64 qt5 plugins platforms kwin qpa plugin so and as you can see it's a mess right here constant error here and then on top of that all these symbols that are broken. And I thought, oh my goodness, what is the matter? So it went through, it got up to 100%, and all of those errors, and I thought, all right, well, what do we need to do? Well, one nice thing about RevDep Rebuild is it goes ahead and tries to figure out what needs to be reinstalled. Now, this is a huge failure. Because right here, after it does this, Look at his all prepared starting the rebuild. And it wants to rebuild all of this. All of this. It's still going. It's still going. And now it's checking to see what it needs to do. And it gets through. And then look at this. Look at this. Emerging one of 1,337 packages. Nuh uh. No, -uh, no way. I am not reinstalling something. I can't remember what. There we go. <laughs> something is not right, guys. 1,337 packages need to be rebuilt. No, we don't do that. So, anyway, it started to go ahead and do that with Python exec, and it got through, and, and I canceled it. I can't, it's like, no, no, something's not right with that. And then I was kind of afraid after I canceled it, 
because I thought, ooh, what if Python exec was in the middle of installing? Let's just go ahead. So I, re I went ahead and did an emerge dash 1a Python exec. Now what, what that, the dash 1a does is uh, that tells it to just reinstall it one time. And if it's not in the world file, then don't worry about adding it to the world file because if it's a dependency of something, it doesn't get put in the world file. And then, of course, ask me to make sure that something crazy doesn't happen. So, yeah, I went ahead and let it rebuild the Python exec. And so that went pretty fast there and got done. Now, the other thing that you will see here is that afterwards, I am emerging KWIN. And let me see if I have that in this page here. I believe right here because what it said here was kwin qpa plugin.so and so what i did was because i always can't remember the eQuery command eQuery b and b list what packages files belong to so that was the offending file right there and according to that that file belongs to kwin now, you say, Dust Gregor, you're using i3. Well, yes, but this system was initially built with Windows. No, Windows, what am I saying? Oh, man. Uh, Trader, yeah, nine. It was built with KDE. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Windows, what am I saying? <laughs> yes, it, it, I had originally built KDE. It had Plasma 5 all set up. And I, I had that running for a while until Irish got me on to i3. Um, and I still have it there. I still, and you know, every once in a while, I've, when something's kind of just kind of flaky and I'm not sure what's going on, if it's an issue with i3 and the bindings, sometimes I'll go back into KDE to just check things out to make sure things look okay. Plus, I'm really curious, too, as to what kind of changes they are making to KDE. Yeah, uh, and well, it's getting better. It's just getting better slowly, but I've kind of gotten spoiled with i3 anyway, so it's not a big deal. Any which way, with Katie Kwin QPA plugin .so being a part of Kwin, I decided that I would go ahead over here and reinstall Kwin. So I reinstalled that package. That is a huge package that takes forever to go through and so I'm just going to hit the space bar get to the end of everything so when we did that I went ahead and I deleted the .rr files for RevDepth rebuild and I ran that again and when I ran that again after reinstalling Kwin we end up getting to 100% with everything good to go now, I also did a Google search, or I shouldn't say Google search. You know what? Google's been ticking me off lately with a lot of their stuff and how Google has been throwing so much garbage into their searches that I've finally set all of my default searches over to DuckDuckGo. And you say, Doss, are you endorsing DuckDuckGo? Well, yes and no. I I figure a lot of Linux distributions come with DuckDuckGo as the default search engine. So I figured, you know what, maybe I need to give DuckDuckGo a little bit of love and get away. And you say also, oh, D Dash, you're still using Chrome. Well, yeah, I'm still using Chrome and I haven't been able to get away from it. Uh, it is what it is. Okay, one step at a time. Baby steps, guys. <laughs> Just baby steps. So I, I did a, a Google search on that, and I was looking for some things that might be a problem, and I saw this right here about the RevDef rebuild, and so I went to it, and sure enough, it had pretty much the exact same thing that I had a problem with, with all of this listing here um, being on here, and that Kwin QPA plugin.so, and he talks about in here how that was happening and how it tried to rebuild his entire system and that there's a little bit of a difference between using RevDep Rebuild and RevDep Rebuild.sh. I prefer still the .sh script because of just the way it runs. 
and evidently there are some bugs with the way those things work. Now he did a regular revved up rebuild without it afterwards and he still compiled a hundred and something packages if you read this. This will be linked in, of course in the description about this problem. But when I got all the way down towards the end it pretty much um, said this right here and, and that's exactly what I was doing or in the middle of doing when I was doing my research. It says the real problem is this and it points here to the KWIN QPA plugin and so emerged KWIN and my Revit rebuild SH is clean now. That's exactly what happened. So I'm glad that it reinforced to me what I did was proper. If you ever run into something like that and you're thinking my goodness gracious it wants to rebuild how many packages stop that right there do some research to, luckily i did not just blindly say oh wow look at that it's gonna rebuild 100,337 packages four days later are we almost done that it's not something you want to do guys not at all so in this case i was able to rebuild one package kwin that was the offending package and once i did that it seemed to repair everything else now at first i thought maybe my depth clean there were only eight packages and there was nothing in there it should have caused issues so just as a warning a heads up a, hey what do you know? I wanted to share that with you guys tonight. And uh, just in, I don't know if it's something that just recently happened. You might also say, why are you still using RevDepth Rebuild? Because a lot of times if there are dependency problems, the newest portage pulls them out and tells you. I tend to do it mostly out of habit. It's just the same way that I've done a lot of things out of habit. And you know who knows what that would have broken in other packages and i'm glad that it's now fixed and as long as all those checks and balances come back that hey you're good your system looks uh stable then what's it really matter so if it's morning evening noon or night if your system says it wants to compile recompile every single thing that you've ever done think twice look at that again don't let it always just go and say ah it knows better because in this case, it sure didn't know better. And that would have been a painful rebuild. <laughs> so, have a great evening, morning, noon, night. I'm repeating myself. <laughs> Bye, guys.